Hi, my name is John Paul Raj and I'm on a mission to make the learning of math fun. So if you're new to this channel, please do consider subscribing. On this particular video, I'm going to be solving the modeling part of paper 6 for 0607 International Math IGCSC. And this is 6-1, the first variant from October, November 2021. Let's start. So this particular modeling task is entitled as reflecting a laser beam and the description of the task says this task looks at models for the height of the image of a reflected laser beam on a vertical wall. Uh, in this task, all the measurements are in meters. Okay, so make sure that you mark, you know, all these keywords that stand out. All right, the diagram shows by a dashed line, dashed line, the dotted line, whatever you call that the side view of the path of a laser beam. The laser beam starts at source L. So that's your L, that's a source. Uh, travels to a point R on the ground, AB. So AB, this horizontal ground, as it says, that's uh, AB. Um, so the laser beam from L travels down, that's the arrow, okay, hits R. Reflects at the point R so that the angle LRA, LRA is this angle, is equal to angle NRB, NRB, this is the angle, okay, so those two angles are equal, travels to N, its image on the vertical wall, so this is the image, all right, so the laser beam travels from here, that's the arrow, and then it reflects off, bounces off that point R, and then, you know, uh, reflects on that wall, uh, BN is the wall, and that N is where that image of that uh, beam is. All right, the height of L above the horizontal ground is uh, LA is 4. So this is 4 as it's given here. The height of N above the horizontal ground NB is H. Okay, that's H. And that's, I think, that's what we're trying to model in this question. The height of the image. Okay, that H. AR is equal to 6. AR, okay, from A to R, the point where it bounces, that's 6. And RB is equal to 15. R to B, that's from R where it bounces off, the, the beam where it bounces off, to the wall is 15. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. Complete the statements to show that H is equal to 10. H is equal to 10. Okay, the height. Uh, triangle LRA is similar to the triangle NRB. Uh, that's pretty obvious because this is going to be 90 degrees and this is also going to be 90 degrees. And these two angles are equal. So, you know, in those two triangles, two angles are equal. The third angle then must be equal as they all add up to 180 degrees. That shows that by AAA test, the two triangles are similar. So they have the statement, which is actually um, the corresponding sides of um, those similar triangles are going to be in the same ratio, are going to be proportional. So H, which is a height here, over 4 from this particular triangle should be equal to 15, the base of this triangle, over 6. All right, let me use red, over 6. <coughs> corresponding sides, right? So then you can write H as 15, uh, times 4 over 6, and that is equal to 10, all right? That's all that needs to be shown here. All right, next question number 9. <clears throat> the laser source L can move towards or away from the wall. So that's the L, it moving, it's moving, in the, in the diagram it shows it's moving towards the wall, but it says in the question that it can move either towards or away from the wall. It now moves X meters to the right, right from where it was, okay? So it was like 4 meters, sorry, 6 meters away from that, original point, okay, so if R is where it's reflecting from, that point A has moved, um, it's moved to the right, so that AR becomes 6 minus X, so this, apparently this R has remained fixed and this has become, you know, 6 minus X. The point R does not move, that's what I meant by saying the R, the point R did not move, it remains fixed. The other measurements remain the same. When the laser beam reflects at R, the triangle LRA and triangle NRB will always be similar. Okay, we already discussed that before, why they are similar. Uh, use a method in question 8, the one that we just saw, uh, to find a model for H in terms of X. So since they are similar, we can write that down. Okay, since uh, triangle LRA is similar to triangle NRB, we can say that H over 4, that's the height of uh, the triangle NRB, and uh, LA is the height of the smaller triangle, LAR, should be equal to 15, the base of that larger triangle, over the base of the smaller triangle at 6 minus X. And we want to find a model for H in terms of X, so we can just rearrange the terms, just as we did in this particular question. We can say H must be equal to 15 times a 4 over a 6 minus X, and 15 times 4, 4 and 5 is 24, 1, 
60 over 6 minus x. That's h. That's the model. Sketch a graph of h against x for the values of x between negative 6 and 6. So this is the first thing I would want you to do when you are using a graphing calculator. Set the values, okay, the, the x values, the axis, okay, as given in the question before you actually make the sketch. So I'm just going to jump to the calculator here on my computer. Uh, let me share that quickly. There we go. You can see this. I'll just uh, and add the graph page. Uh, hit escape because, as I said, <clears throat> first make the window settings, okay? So this is negative 6. This is negative 6. And this one, there's not, no measure given, all right? So you can just leave it open right now. And uh, hit tab, come down here. This is 6. And this point is actually 0. So let's just leave it at negative 1 here, okay? So you got a grid and we want to graph h, the h that we just found out as 60 over 6 minus x. So I'm just going to bring this thing up and say this is 60, right? 60, 60 divided by 6 minus x. This is your graph of h and we can't see anything really. This is very bad. In this scale, it's not showing much. Okay, from negative 6, to six and I can't see anything up. So let me just change that value a little bit more. And let's say I make it um, 25. Let's just check, there you go. That's much better. That's much better. And so I think, you know, sometimes um, in the modeling questions, especially uh, just as you can see here very clearly, let me bring it back to the iPad. They haven't given any upper limit for H. And as you saw when I first drafted, it didn't, it didn't show much. So this is one of the things that's expected from the students that you have to play around with the with the window settings and that is required because the graph must look decent. And initially, let me go back to the calculator. Initially, the settings were something like six. Okay, so if I just bring it back to six as it was earlier on, this is just not 265, just six. Okay, so if I just bring it back to the original value, can you see it? It's hardly any, hardly much. And then, you know, if you are just saying, oh, the graph, the paper said six, and uh, I mean, the original settings were negative six and six for X. They didn't show anything for Y values, the Y being H in this case. That's not the kind of graph you should be sketching, okay? So make some adjustments. You can just play around with it. In On the handheld, you may not be able to make the changes here the way I'm doing it on the calculator. Just go on the menu, uh, window zoom, and the window settings. And there you can change the settings, okay? So I just tap down to uh, Y max. I just, it was a complete fluke, all right? So, that's a decent graph. And then you can just sketch the graph accordingly. I'm not going to sketch it right now, uh, unless until it's required later on. And um, so, yeah, we can keep that graph. And I'll come back to the uh, iPad. And it says, write down the equation of the vertical asymptote, the equation of the vertical asymptote. And look at the equation. You know that it's going to be x equals 6. Okay, so without even looking at the graph, you can say just from the equation, the model h is equal to 60 over 6 minus 6, you can say, that the vertical asymptote should be x is equal to 6. All right, now, <clears throat> the part 2 for C says, give a reason why there is a vertical asymptote. Give a reason why is there a vertical asymptote. Why x cannot be equal to 6? That's a question, right? Because when you say that there is a vertical asymptote, algebraically, we're saying that the denominator uh, should not become 0, that 6 should not be um, part of the domain. So why is there a vertical asymptote is the reason that we need to give, okay? And it's just one point. Refer to the path of the laser beam. There's a hint given. So rather than using algebraic ideas of, oh, you know, it's not defined, the denominator becoming zero, that's not what's required. Uh, that's not what's expected. Um, refer to the path of the laser beam. So let's just take a look at what's going to happen. Let's just take a look at what's going to happen when X is going to become, X will be six. I'm not talking about the denominator becoming zero. But let's just take a look at this diagram. When x is 6, when x is equal to 6, and remember this is x minus 6, right? When x is equal to 6, actually, the laser beam, remember we said the laser beam starts from L. It starts from L and at an angle, it's coming down at an angle, which then makes it bounce off R and then get reflected. If it were x, if x were equal to 6, then what's going to happen is that it's not going to come down at an angle, but it's going to go just vertically down straight, like at 90 degrees, it's just going to go down. And it will get reflected, but it will get bounced up straight up. You see the difference? Okay, so actually what's going to happen when x is equal to 6, because it must be any number other than 6. That means then we are going to get an angle, the angular path, okay, from L. Only if there's an angular path will it bounce and come to the wall. Otherwise, what's going to happen at x equals 6, it's just going to go bounce down straight down, 
and go up. It's not going to bounce to the wall. Okay, so how do we write that down? Uh, there is a vertical assumption. If, if, if x is equal to 6, the path of the laser beam will, uh, from f, from l, sorry, from l, that's the source, right, will, will be perpendicular. or straight. Uh, should we use the word straight? Per perpendicular will be perpendicular and bounce back, back, bounce back from, I think the point was N. Let me just check. Yeah, that was a, uh, sorry, that's A, this point, okay? So L to A and bounces back straight up from A, right? So bounce back from A. Yeah, the image will not be on the wall. That's clear, right? Because we're trying to find out because the um, the the model H is about the height of the image on the wall. So you're not going to get that because it's just going to go up. It's the this is not going to happen. This reflection it's not going to come on the wall. It's just going to go up. So that's why there won't be any H. H is not defined for that value of X, X is equal to six. Clear? <clears throat> Let's move on to numbers uh, 10, question number 10. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. The laser source L now stays fixed. Okay, now the L is fixed. At the start, AR is equal to six. Okay, that's how we started with and RB was 15, correct? The point R then moves X meters towards B along the ground. Now, now this time what's happening is L is remaining fixed. Okay. In the earlier case, this question number nine, we saw that R mode, uh, sorry, L mode and R was fixed. L mode, R was fixed. Now what's happening is L is remaining fixed. The source of that uh, laser beam is uh, fixed. Whereas this point R, that's moving towards the wall. All right. The point R then moves X meters towards B along the ground. The dashed line shows the path of the laser beam. Okay. And then again, all right. So that means it's coming up here. That's a new point. This is the new point where it's going to get reflected off. And that's the path. Okay. And that's your H. Show that H is equal to 60 minus 4X over 6 plus X. So the same idea. Let's use the same idea. This is the, uh, uh, a, uh, the height, the new height. And uh, they have not called it any name. So perhaps we should just you know, label it because we want to make use of um, uh, similar triangles, right? The same idea is going to be repeated. So let's do that. Um, let me say this is uh, A, B. I'm going to call this C and I'm going to call this D, right? So label it before you make a, a mention of it, okay? So then you can say triangle C, B, D is similar to triangle L, A, D. And then you can say that H, the height of that triangle CBD over, now you have six plus, uh, sorry, four, sorry, four. The height of the smaller triangle is equal to the base of the larger triangle, which is, which was 15 initially, right? Which was 15. Now, because of the point R moving up by X, it's 15 minus X. Over, um, the smaller triangle has now become six plus X. So this is six plus X here. That's the base of the smaller triangle. Clear? So again, the idea of similar triangles, the ratio of corresponding sides, the height H to four, the smaller triangle's height is four. The base of the larger triangle, which was initially 15, has now become 15 minus X, reducing by X, because the point R is moved up by X. Uh, and uh, and because it's moved up, which uh, the, high, the base of the smaller triangle, which was six, has now increased to six plus X. Clear? And now I think it's just about a little bit of uh, algebra, just multiply the numerator by four, so H will be equal to four times of 15 minus X over a six plus X. And that should be 60 minus six X, uh, sorry, four X. <coughs> Raise it, four uh, X over a six plus X as required, correct? Okay, now what do we have to do? Then they're saying sketch the graph of H is equal to this new model, model for these values of X, negative six, X, X is between negative 6 and uh, 15. And you can see that it's not defined at X is equal to negative 6 because, again, look at the denominator, okay? Horizontal, uh, vertical asymptote again. Um, 
Okay, uh, again, they've not given the maximum value of H. Let's just keep that in mind. I'm going to draw that graph on a different page. Let's jump to the calculator and let me, I don't need a different uh, problem. Should I put it as a different problem? Maybe, why not? Okay, so I'm just going to insert a new problem. Um, not this way. Let's just delete this, okay? Delete this page, come back, doc, insert a new problem and new graph page. <clears throat> and uh, this one is negative six. And uh, this one is not given. Maybe we have to adjust that again. And this is 15. And what do we have here? This is a negative one. I'll just make it a negative one. Okay, so that's what we have. I'm going to enter the function. This is 60 minus four X. So we got 60 minus 4x in the denominator, what do I have? 6 plus x, 6 plus x. All right. That's pretty decent. I don't think we need, because this is 15. Should we make this a slight change here? Let me just check, check okay? So, because if there's a y-intercept, you know, so I'm just, again, let's see. There, my lucky number is 25, I think, okay? So I got a nice graph with a y-intercept there. And um, yeah, I think this is pretty cool. I can keep this way and as I said, you know, some, sometimes this kind of a question, uh, the question where you're not given a maximum value of Y is deliberately uh, made this way because they've given you the values for X so that you can then adjust the window settings. And there's no, you know, there's no hard and fast rule as long as you're able to see the key features and Y intercept is a key feature, okay? So look for the entire graph, zoom out a little bit, you know, play around with it and get to know how to make the window settings, how to change the window settings in your calculator and then graph and then graph, okay? But when you're doing something like this, make sure that you have also labeled what that uh, y-intercept is. Not sure whether they'll ask for the y-intercept. Yeah, there's nothing like that asked because they've given three points for that, okay? Okay, uh, so that is the graph part. I'm going to come back to the, oh, I'm still on the iPad itself, right? So let me just show what I meant by, this is the y-intercept, okay? So if you are going to graph this, remember at negative six, there's a vertical asymptote. Uh, it might be useful to just, let me just check what that uh, y-intercept is. So if I just trace, mm, there you go. All right, so 0, 10 is a y-intercept. Maybe that can be indicated also, okay? Wow, just move the graph up here and there. Maybe even the x-intercept, why not? Okay, just a sec. And come back. Let's just say I want the zeros of this graph and that's 15 comma zero, okay? So that's the x-intercept. So the x-intercept, the y-intercept are important features to keep a note of and then just go ahead and graph it. The reason I have just uh, highlighted these uh, is because of the number of marks, okay? They said three points for this graph. So might as well be as specific with as, as many details as possible. All right. When the point R, moving on to uh, question C, when the point R has moved X meters towards B, the height H is six. All right. When the point R has moved X meters towards this point B, the height H is six. All right. Find the value of X. Find the value of X. Okay, the X, this is okay. So let's make use of that in the model. All right, two points is given for that. So they're saying, uh, H is six. So we have that model that is 60 minus four X, 60 minus four X over, was that? Six plus X, six plus X. Now <clears throat> it's a calculator. You, you're allowed to use your calculator. So we don't need to do all of this. We can just, since we have already defined, we can just say six is equal to 60 minus four X over a six plus X and then jump straight into the calculator and use the calculator functionality, okay? If you want, you can go ahead and do that because it's not it's not bad algebra, all right? So, but I'm just looking at two points. Okay, for two points, we want to do all of this. Go ahead and do it if you want to. Uh, but I'm going to show you the calculator option also because that's a smarter option. If you're just going to solve this by uh, hand without the calculator, then this is going to be 36 plus six X uh, is equal to 60 minus four X. And that should be 10 X is equal to 60 minus 36. What was that? Uh, four and 24, that's 10 X. That means X must be equal to 2.4, okay? And since we are talking about the whole questions in meters, make sure that you write uh, meters. This is doing by hand. If you are, I don't know, I would, I would have preferred you use the calculator. So I'm just going to show how to do 
how to do the same question using the calculator because we've already defined the function here right? the function is defined all that you need to do is that you need to add a calculator page so i'm going to use that and you're solving for x right so you can just say go to the algebra menu and just say and solve and was it defined as f1 it was defined as f1 so i'm just going to say f1 of x is equal to what does it say to six, right? So this is six comma X and you hit enter, it will say 2.4. So this is also fine because it's a calculator paper. You're allowed to use your calculator. You just need to indicate the syntax, okay? Just show the syntax and you're good, all right? So just write it two point, write 2.4. I would say the only thing that you need to show as part of working is a substitution. So up until here is fine. Up until here is fine. And then you can just say using GDC and then you can use your calculator and you know, say X is equal to 2.4 meters. Clear? <clears throat> All right. Number 11. Uh, at the start, at the start, when AR is equal to 6, the height of the image is 10. Okay. The height of the image is 10 when AR is equal to 6. That's the initial condition, right? The first part, you know, when we said H, you know, that is now 10. Uh, after the point R moves X meters, Left or right? Okay, they're saying, okay, they're showing the arrow. Okay, it's moving X meters to the right. The height of the image is H is equal to, okay, we just saw this uh, model. Why is the change in the height of the image? So Y is equal to 10 minus H. Okay, that's the change in height. So it was 10 and Y is equal to 10 minus H. Okay, that makes sense. Show that a model for Y is 14X over 6 plus X. All right, so let's, let's do that. So y is going to be the change in height, right? So y is equal to 10 minus h, but h is given by that expression. So just 10 minus 60 minus 4x, the whole thing over 6 plus x. See, whenever they say show that, you know, there you have to show all the algebraic working, all the algebraic working, all right? So it's just, a, they've given you the, the final expression that you need to bring it down to. So, you know, when you make it a common denominator, 6 plus x, here it'll be 60, plus 10x, and here you have negative 60 plus a 4x. Don't forget that, okay? It's a plus 4x. That means this will reduce to 60 minus 60. That just gets nice state cancels of 10x, and 4x is a 14x over 6 plus x. That's your y, and that's exactly what we required, correct? Okay, B, part 1, where it says when the point R moves 1 meter to the left, the point R moving 1 meter to the left, uh, away from B. Um, okay, B is here. It's going to the left um, by one meter. We say X is equal to negative one. X is equal to negative one. So this is X, okay, one meter here. X is equal to negative one. Use the model in part A to find the change in height of the image. X is equal to negative one. We just have to, you know, substitute X is equal to negative one. So that uh, Y, which is the change in height, Y is equal to 14 times a negative one over a six plus a negative one. Uh, just show the substitution, then you can use the calculator. Okay, so this is just uh, negative 14 over a 5. And the change is negative. Notice that, you know, the height, when you're measuring any length, it's not going to be negative. It's just relative to where it is. And the reason we're getting the answer why as a negative value for a length, the height is also a length, right? But you're getting that is because uh, when you're going to the left, when it gets, you know, when that point, the bouncing point is to the left, H, this point where it's going to be, it's going to be above, it's going to be above. So it's actually like saying, you know, 10 minus H, 10 minus H, this is 10, this was the initial position, 10 minus H, you know, that's going to be a, a negative number, right? So when you have 10, H is going to be greater than 10, then you're going to get 10 minus H as negative. And 10 minus H is what your Y is, the, the change, right? The change in height. Uh, so this was the initial height was 10. And uh, when your height is above that, that's because this bouncing point, as I said, is moving to the left. When it comes to the left uh, of, you know, it's moving to the left by one meter, that height is going to go up. And therefore, H is greater than 10, which means 10 minus H, which was the change that Y is going to be negative. And therefore, you're getting a negative value here. And this is something like negative uh, 2.8, I believe. Okay, so I guess you don't have to explain all that. I just thought I'll, you know, for those of you who are wondering why the height is coming out to be negative. All right, uh, the point R moves an additional one meter to the left away from B, okay? So it's already moved one step to the left uh, by one meter from away from B. Second step, write in the value of X. Well, X must be equal to negative two this time, right? X is equal to a negative two. Because it's, if one meter, 
Find the additional change in height. Find the additional change in height. So do the same thing. You'll get y is equal to 14 times a negative 2 over 6 plus a minus 2. And that's going to be equal to a negative 28 over a 4. That is negative 7 again. It's negative because, you know, as it's going to the left, uh, you know, the height will be um, more than the initial height. And also because um, the change is negative, and I said that the new height is above the original height, no, the initial height when it was 10, when we say that the change is negative 2.8, it literally means that the new height right now is 12.8. That's why it's gone up, okay? That's the negative means it's gone above. And again, when now, uh, when the, the when that point, uh, the point R has moved uh, left by two units, and you're getting the change in height as negative and actually the new height right now is 17 from 10, the initial height of 10, the change being negative and that means it's gone above and it's gone above as I explained it here. Not that they're going to expect um, this kind of explanation, but I thought for those of you curious, I might just give those extra tidbits. Okay, so negative seven actually means it's a change, but it's from 10 and it's going above and the new height is actually 17. Clear? All right, the last question, number 12. Uh, now they all, you know, A, B, C, A, B, H, and 4. Find H in terms of A and B, all right? We're going to use the same ratio that we started off with. We said H over 4 must be equal to B over A. Or in other words, we've got H is equal to 4B over A. Clear? That's because of the similar triangles, okay? Throughout the exercise, throughout this question, you know, we knew that these two triangles are going to be similar. So H over 4 is equal to B over A, and you get H is equal to 4B over A. Okay, and then the final part, the point R moves X meters to the right, the point R moves X meters to the right along, uh, towards B along the horizontal ground. Why is the change in height? Find a model for Y, okay? Similar idea was explored in the earlier question, the change in height with actual numbers, but now you just want a generalized idea for the model for Y, the change in height, the change in height in terms of A, B, and X. Do not simplify answer. That means you can just leave it as it is, okay? So let's just see. This is the original height, okay? This is the initial height. H equals 4B over A. 4B over A. So when the point R has moved up to the right, okay? It's moved right by X meters towards, you know, uh, B. Then the dotted line, the dashed line, whatever you call that, it's coming here, right? And that means it's, come, you know, somewhere. Need not be parallel, but, okay, so... Uh, that means this has become um, the new R, if I call it R prime, you know, that new point, new the new position of R, that's like A plus X. The base of the smaller triangle is now A plus X and the base of the larger triangle is um, B minus X. So now using the ratio of those two similar triangles, we can see that the, uh, you know, H over 4 is going to be equal to uh, B minus X over A plus x, okay, because it's moved to the right, correct? So that new height then would be equal to 4b minus x over a plus x. And that means if this was the original height and this is the new height, then the change in height, okay, y is going to be equal to just the difference, right? So from the initial 4b minus 4b over a minus 4 times a b minus x over an a plus x. And they said do not, I mean, you're not required to simplify. You can leave it there. That is the final expression that's required. So that completes the modeling part of this paper. And if any of you have a different way to solve any of these questions or a different reasoning, please do mention that in the comment section below. I'll be happy to read that and get to know your perspectives on how to solve these questions. And if you found this video useful, please make sure that you like, share and subscribe to this channel. I'm going to see you all in the next video.